and oh. their road to get there oh, don't was even. the best teams in the league. And you 3-0 them. them. The pressure's actually on them now. They're starting to feel the pressure. Like They're not closing. The crowd was pro-Minnesota. It's time for another Reverse Sweep Review Show presented by USAA Insurance. I'm your host, Katie Bedford, joined by Pac-Man and only Pac-Man. You got the couch all to yourself. No one here to interrupt your opinions. How does it feel? It's kind of weird. I kind of missed the little red guy. We don't know what happened to him. He got lost in Dallas, so hopefully Ian can find his way home soon. But for right now, it's going to be Katie and John and the results of everything that we saw happen to the major guys. Let's take a look at how everything played out. Well, teams like Gorilla, Paris, getting first rounded and losers, not spending a ton of time at the major, but Atlanta phase losing to Minnesota, the shocker of day one. As we move through the rest, New York, Minnesota, Toronto, Seattle coming out on top. Seattle sweeping London to move on to losers round three, where they would then eliminate phase eliminate atlanta phase seattle gets it done prasini eliminates his brother arsides we move on to day number four and well minnesota despite all of the odds an incredible march through winners bracket they come back from an 04 deficit to win the grand final pac-man that's where we're gonna start let's talk about minnesota rocker let's talk about standy let's talk about that incredible grand final i mean that's one of the best finals that I've ever seen. Clearly the best comeback that I've ever seen. Standy with one of the best performances I've ever seen out of, one, out of a young player. There's so much to say about Minnesota and yeah. their individuals. It's just the way that they managed to come together to win a tournament at this stage of the season was incredible. Just mm -hmm. every single one of their players had their moments. Standy was just incredible all the way throughout. He and Attach and the SNDs were next level the way they managed to clutch up round after round and really just turn around what seemed like an impossible task in that final like the final was was over and All, their road to get there oh don't was even, the best teams in the league you every couldn't one ask, of them you couldn't ask for a team to have a tougher road like that that in this cdl that is the toughest road that you can have uh simply just starting with atlanta let's let's not just go through their whole road. Start with Atlanta. Starting right there, that's the hardest match that you can have, quite literally. Then you go to Dallas, the team that almost beat Atlanta. Quite literally about the yeah. hardest road you can get. Then you go to Toronto, mm -hmm. a team that's been at the top of the league since stage two. And, and you 3-0 them. them. The Rock Rocker were fantastic throughout this entire weekend and much love to them and their organization. That was a ridiculous performance. Yeah, if you're new to CDL, guys, uh, Minnesota did get to two grand final appearances last year. They were not able to win either of those. So this is actually their first ever tournament win for that organization, which is an incredible feeling as well. Not a lot of the teams necessarily have that. So for Minnesota to finally be able to get there and get the job done, despite all odds, was incredible too, because let's talk about Toronto coming in from loser's bracket. They swept through those first four maps. They were up 4-0 at a best of nine. So Pac-Man, when you look at that as a team, what as a coach for Brian Saint, like what, what happens to be able to rally your team from that deep of a hole? I mean, all you can really say is like, they probably have said it like one map at a time. It's never chalked. Like it's, it's truly never over till it's over. But you just have to be like, all right, whatever the map was, it was Miami search and destroy, mm -hmm. come out, win this map. Then we focus on the one next map. Yeah. And then after a certain number of maps, you say something like, the pressure's actually on them now. They're mm -hmm. starting to feel the pressure. Like They're not closing. The crowd was pro Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So the that crowd, can make a huge the difference. crowd, which was actually dead silent for about an hour, started to come to life and started to cheer for, try to cheer them on. And that's obviously a boost to you, but the ultra players are feeling it too. Like they're, it's getting harder and harder to close. They're running out of gas. They expected to win here. They're not winning here. They're expected to win in control. What's they're really strong at? They're not winning there. And now all of a sudden it's like, holy, holy crap. These, like this is close. And this is a team that already 3 0 us too earlier. So they can do this. And so much pressure is on ultra and they collapsed. By all accounts, this match was over. Like right. 250 to 30 was the first map, I believe, something like that. Like something ridiculous, mm -hmm. 250, 34, 6-1, 3-1. It's as if losers has an advantage. Yeah, it's, <laughs> they came and they were they were dismantling mm -hmm. Rocker. They really were, and it's it's the point where people were calling it boring. Yeah, I saw like, I saw Twitter, like, yawn. Some, I think someone quoted, has the grand final even started yet? Like, mm -hmm. it, it, was di it was disappointing, and that almost made it better, right? Was that disappointment transforming into something so incredible by the end of it? that you kind of had to have that low as a spectator to be able to appreciate so, right. 
what Minnesota was able to accomplish. There were many, 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 many viewers who, who just left. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, why? You know, I, I saw people say, like, I flew out or I left the venue. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I missed that grand final. Yeah, right. You left and then they came back and they, they're like, what? They won? And you just, you just, you kind of put it out of your mind. Like, okay, good game. I saw a lot of people saying, you know what? Rocker, you played amazing this weekend, yeah. which they did. Like, so you get second place. So what? You came out flat in the final, you lose. Mm -hmm. Happens. But to, to have that kind of comeback was just amazing. And I don't know if it's the best series that I've ever seen because on its own, every single individual map was kind of a blowout. Well, that's the difference, the first... right? That's the difference between the best series where I would argue FaZe Dallas at Major 4 was a better series in the grand final. This was the best comeback of all time. Mm -hmm. Different things. They're completely different things. So I, I mean, so this was definitely the com best comeback of all time. I would say that the FaZe Dallas series overall was like more of a clash head to head. It was like a nail, back and forth. nail yeah. Every single map, like they could have gone different ways. Uh, there's been a bunch of them in the past. Fariko Impact versus Envy in the final. Like, mm -hmm. there's some shocking things that happened. This this series was just incredible in the sense of the way Ultra was beating them. Right. To act to just flip flop completely, like out of nowhere, mm -hmm. to where Rocker actually just started dismantling them. In that sense, it's just incredible and the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And let's talk about Sandy too, guys, right? Sandy comes in to Minnesota. They're red hot with him when he initially came in earlier in the year, taking down teams like Minnesota, or taking down teams, pardon me, like Dallas, looking really good. And then they got cold and kind of slumped. And then they got a little better, but then they just sort of plateaued. And Sandy, throughout this whole major and in that, in that grand final, has just been such a standout rookie for that team. Yeah, I mean, he definitely changed the complexion of the team. Like, he, he was the piece that the team needed, whether or not they ever actually reached this point or not. When he first joined the team, obviously they started looking like a top three team in the game. I believe they got fourth with accuracy on the team. Yeah. And then, yeah, they kind of flattened out. But Stanley the whole time was clearly not the issue. Like he was a part of their resurgence, a part of the reason why they actually looked like they could go towards the top. And I mean, there's not a lot that can be said against him. He's this whole time looked like a veteran player playing at the top of the like game. You have, to, you have to give love to Priest and Major Maniac too, right? They're the players who were no longer on phase after True. after the change. And uh, Priesta, we've been like, we've been waiting to see the Priesta we know. The you know, former Priesta, Priesta is incredible. And Major's always been that dirty player who's gonna do all those side jobs that aren't as glamorous. He's not gonna have the crazy stats. And they both showed up exactly the way you need them to. Yeah, and they both had uh, actually some crazy journeys of their own in this game. I know Priesta never was actually on the bench, but he actually started this game as a submachine gun player and just yeah. was not. It wasn't working simply, out. Simply just wasn't working out. He was not very good at it. One of the lower performing subs in the league. And then when they picked up Standy, he had to adjust to the, initially to the AR role. But now he's one of the better players in the league. Major Maniac got benched mm -hmm. to pick up Standy and had to wait his turn and wait for the team to make the decision to switch out accuracy for him. And then he also started out a bit slow. Yeah. To see the team to come together like mm -hmm. that and both those players playing amazing and to beat their former team. And then, not like they had any bad blood or anything, but... But there's gotta to be beat, some validation Right, there, to beat right? them like, you know, like, we're good. Like, they're proven players. That's why they're on the team to begin with. They didn't get dropped on the team because they're bad. It's a 44 switch and Atlanta formed a team that everyone's calling the best team in the world. So you can't be too salty. But then to beat those guys and beat all the best teams, it's like we are who we are for a reason and we've proven it. A reminder, Reverse Sweep is presented by USAA Insurance. They make it easy to insure your stuff like rigs and gear, and they have your back. Eligibility restrictions apply. Insurance provided by United Services Automobile Association and its affiliates, San Antonio, Texas. We've talked about the highest highs. <laughs> Let's talk about the lowest lows. Toronto Ultra blew a 4-0 lead in the grand final. That's just heartbreaking. I got... <sighs> 4-0. It's, it's tough because you're right on the cusp of, uh, of doing something that not many people can do. You're right there on the edge. And clearly, they fell apart, right? Like, I, Rocker obviously started playing better. But realistically, you could see it in the gameplay and see it on their faces. The nerves got the best of them. Do you think it's the crowd tough. played a part in that? I do actually think the crowd yeah. played a part in it because it was going against them. Not the fact that the crowd was there, but the fact that the crowd was actually actively cheering against them in the comeback makes it it makes it just that much harder so the crowd was against them in the optic match too but the difference is it kind of it, it looked like it actually like kind of gave them motivation yeah but the optic the crowd was so not necessarily for the rocker like they're for optic they were against 
Yeah. Toronto. And you said they were and quiet a initially. They were but quiet initially. You're starting to hear a crowd and you start hearing these sounds because you, you can hear it to an extent. It's oh, you not, can hear it. Yeah. You can hear it. And then you start to realize all of the sound I'm hearing is everyone in this room wanting me to fail. Right. It's like we want this. Like the crowd was now went from an optic crowd to uh, let's let let's see Rocker finish out this right. this to a this not pad. Toronto crowd right to yeah. a not Toronto crowd and so they were cool with Toronto winning when they were winning like they were silent they weren't actively cheering that time but when Rocker actually started showing life mm -hmm. the crowd started showing life and yeah. started you know boosting up the Rocker and adversely that that same thing happened in Toronto in terms of bouncing back it's tough because you were clearly good enough to win the tournament you were. Probably, I mean, you were you were yeah, right on the edge, four, um, right? The grand final. So if you if you just take it like that and you look at it that way, you should be it should be a positive thing. Like, yeah, we lost in the final, but we lost five four. It's just the way, obviously, the way it happened changes your mindset. And and I think that maybe a couple of days off that first day of scrimming is not going to be fun. No. Right. That's well. Just, they said I think a couple of them. I'm not sure quite who it was. It was Bands. Who else? They said they're going to take some time away from social media, which is honestly a wise decision because yeah. most people are not going to be kind. No, actually, I, I pretty much disagree with that. I think really? that most people are kind, but human nature is to ignore. Yes. Okay, is maybe to ignore that's a better all point. The, the you filter similar out the good and all good you comments see. Like, hey, man, don't worry yeah. about it. You got, you got to the LOL, finals, yeah. like, blah, blah, blah. But you're going to see, like, the guy, like, you dipshits. Yeah. You really choked. You, EU the sucks. The biggest choke all of all the, time. Yeah. EU sucks. EU can't close. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you're going to see. Even if the rest of them are like, that was an incredible final. You guys played so well. Yeah. You're one step away. It sucks what happened to you guys. It just, you still have champs. Yeah. But, yeah. like, you know all that stuff. So you just go, you're like, eh. And you see the negative. So, I mean, that's tough. I, I do think that they can regain. I think that there's a solid enough team. Twice now they've lost in heartbreaking ways. Mm -hmm. So I think the question was even asked last time because they actually choked Dallas yeah. in the last uh, major. They obviously bounced back. They're right there for the finals. I do think that they will regain. It's just the beginning of it that those first couple scrims are going to be tough. Are you worried at all for them at champs or? They still, I mean, they've got time starts on the 19th. No, I think that enough time will have passed by then where the, sting the saltiness will have washed away. Like if, if champs was next week, uh, I would be a little bit worried. Yeah. Yeah, especially if they were, let's say they're up 2-0 in a series and mm -hmm. it was game five, five would have a lot less faith in that game five win than I would have had previously. But by the time champs comes around and, and they're back to practicing a normal schedule and I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be just another one of the teams to beat. Toronto is generally a clutch team. Yeah. Right? They 3 2 LA Thieves. They 3 2 optic i do believe that they have that in them i hope they, they just don't lose that clutch gene and that doesn't get to them when it matters because that's part of the team's dna it's part of their identity is that they're able to clutch up these search and destroys they're so good at them they're so good at those modes that control the teamwork modes it's just unfortunate that they ran into a team who was who had better teamwork on the day who's more clutch and i just i hope i really hope that toronto does come back together strong and we see the the real toronto team so we can have six fantastic teams at the major as opposed to two. So let's talk about Atlanta Phase, one of those teams, hopefully within kind of those right. upper six that we hope finds their footing. But why are we saying that? They got O2'd out of the tournament. They lost to Minnesota, which within context maybe makes a bit more sense. But then they lost 3-2 to Seattle Surge. This is their lowest ever placing, I believe. I think it's the lowest ever for Simp and maybe a Bees. I'm not sure of everyone else. But definitely for Simp, it's his lowest placing ever. And that's got to stay. You won the last major. You won three majors. You've been in four of the grand finals. This was the first grand final you didn't get close to. Well, I know that it's the worst placing for the for Simp and Abizi duo. Mm -hmm. Abizi placed 16th at something before with the United before they picked up Simp. Mm -hmm. Whatever. But then they started placing high. Regardless, this is this loss is 8th, 16th. It's going to feel the same. Like, to them, this is, this is last place. This is the worst that they can do. It's unacceptable. Right. It's completely unacceptable. And maybe, in a way, it's a good thing. If you look at it like, this wasn't champs. This didn't happen at champs, this happened beforehand. We can really sit and talk about what's messing us up. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's a high level converse conversation that only they can have and will understand within themselves. But obviously something is wrong because they're supposed to be a dominant team and they're just not that. Not knowing the players too well individually, I'm not sure how they handle this type of loss, because we haven't really seen the Tiny Terrors in a, in a spot like this. We've never seen them have to bounce back right. from this far down. Do I believe they can do it? I, I, of course, do. Will they? That's up to them and their mentality, because obviously in the game, in the server, when they're all playing well, they're the best. Mm -hmm. 
It's just whether or not they can bounce back. I guess in Modern Warfare, they had like a little bit of a slip, but even then it was like, I believe they lost in the final before this. I mean, my story that like, I looked at phase last year was like, you have the most talent in the game, but you, you never really had that like structure that a Dallas did. So I wasn't necessarily surprised when they would lose because I was like, you can't just win hard points hoping to break the hill because you never rotate. You can't just win based on your talent. This year, I think the teamwork and the discipline is definitely more there, but it, it comes down to, yeah, can you have the right mentality? You have two and a half weeks, roughly, to be able to figure out what's going on and maybe same, same as Toronto, just get back into those scrims and try and compartmentalize into a box and put it away. Yeah, I just, I do, I just hope that a lot, oftentimes when this happens, teams start overthinking little things. Like in scrims, when they start losing little spots or even winning, they'll start over critiquing. Like, this is what happens. Like, this is why our team works off. They need to not do that. You need to make sure that you're still a cohesive unit and not picture, like pointing. Right? Yeah, exactly. And just remember like how good you really are at your core and how clutch they are too. Cause Atlanta's also clutch. Mm -hmm. And it's just, they, this time around, it just wasn't there. It just clearly wasn't there because even in that Seattle series, they went up and normally that's a, they close that out 3-1, they're out of here off and who knows what happens if Atlanta gets the ball rolling going forward. Yeah, I, that's always the curiosity is like, what happens to them if they win just one? Exactly. Like just beat Seattle, you would have ended up playing Optic, but like just just win and be like, oh, hey, reminder, we can do that. Right, no, yeah, <laughs> it gets win. the monkey up your back and yeah. that's so important. Confidence is so important. Just getting that, getting that win, even that just, the fact that they're going game five with Seattle probably hurt their confidence before mm -hmm. the game five even happened. Yeah, I'm just sure like, at the moment we... it didn't become an instant smoke. Like when they mm -hmm. lost the hard point, I'm sure it was like, uh -oh. oh no. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh-oh, maybe the rocker <laughs> loss wasn't just a complete fluke. Fuck, here we go again. Here man. <laughs> we go. And the crowd once again was against them, Yeah. right? Because everyone's like, Atlanta is so boring. They just win everything. And so when people come after you for that and then they see that you're on the ropes, people like to kick. Jeer and yeah. Yeah, they like to down. kick you when you're down. So that's what was happening to them. And it definitely, I don't know, I'm not saying the crowd affected them, but something mentally was off with them. Yeah, I think you can attribute a, a part to the crowd. You cannot blame everything on the crowd at the end of the day. You are still the one holding the controller and playing the game. Uh, but I definitely keep it in account for sure. But let's talk about Seattle. So they eliminated Atlanta phase. They got top six. Classic had a great showing. But they won't be a champ, which kind of sucks. But uh, Seattle, they, they had a pretty solid run. And I, I mean, yes, Paris, London, but they did take down phase. They did. I mean, did I see that? Did I? See, I'd be lying if I said I saw them taking down Phase as a possibility. I thought I was doing it. It was gonna yeah. be three zero easy peasy. Right, right. I, that's a complete lie. Did I see a possibility where they play well on land? Yes, because they did so last time. They happened to just lose three two to Optic. Had they played another team in the slot where they played Phase this time, maybe I would have predicted them to win. They haven't played Phase where I'm obviously gonna pick Phase as the winner but they came out with the win. I mean, who's gonna predict them to be faced? Nobody. So they played extremely well. Nick showed up in a way that I haven't seen Nick play right. in a really long time. That's classic, guys. Oh, classic, I apologize. Classic played so well <laughs> that like, it, I don't know, it's, it brought back some vintage signs of classic. Like, I, everyone has seen, there's a point in, in time where classic was a top five player in the game. He's has that ability. It just, nowadays there's so much talent and the team work is so much better. It's just, it is what it is. But classic played such a, brilliant match to get them over the edge. He was clutching up in the end of the hard point, search and destroy, he was making so many plays. Classic's not traditionally a good search and destroy player. Yeah. And he came out of nowhere making a lot of plays in order to win that game five. There's not much more you can say about them. It's just a great performance, a great way for a team that's been struggling for two seasons to end the season. I mean, that's fair play. I think it's a, that's a good point to take into consideration for sure. Uh, but guys, it's time for the most clutch moments of the major with Got You Covered presented by USAA Insurance. Level up your gear protection with USAA Insurance. So the most, most clutch moments, the the, the hypest part, any anything, whether maybe it was the grand final or otherwise, uh, that, that really stuck out to you. Clutchest moment. <sighs> Ian. Oh. Um. <laughs> Hold on. Well, that was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> the clutchest moment for me. I think I have to go with, it was, it's a point, I, it's very specific, I guess, but there's a point in the middle of the very first round, actually, in game four, when Rocker separated from phase in the hard point. I can't really put my finger on the exact point, but to me at the time when I'm watching, I'm still expecting phase to come back and win. Like I, I'm fully expecting phase to be the phase of, of, I guess not of old, but the phase that we expect. 
So then at, at a point, Rocker actually, there's they separated from FaZe and they're not traditionally a good hardpoint team. And to see them come together and do that, I was like, at the time, I'm like, oh my God, how are they, how are they actually making Simp look human? Like how is Stanley playing this well? How is Rocker actually separating from them? And to me, it was a team clutch moment to beat the best team in the game in a mode where you're not necessarily strong. I would have to just give it to the Rockers as a whole to win that match because that match means everything. If yeah. they don't win that match, there's no way in hell. Even with how well they played throughout the rest, the rest of the weekend, there is no way in hell they go on and win the tournament. Mm -hmm. It's just that match is so huge and gives them all that confidence and being able to turn it on in a mode that you're not the greatest at, it was, it was ridiculous to me. I have to go with Minnesota as well for the clutch comeback on the grand final. I mean, it's the easiest one, right? If, if Ian was here, he would have stolen that, but I can take it now because it's not. <laughs> uh, I have to go with that because it was not just being clutch one time. They had to do it over and over and over for five maps to be able to win that. And I don't, I don't know how you get more clutch, more ice in your veins, if you will, than what we witnessed out of Minnesota in that grand final. So I think across the board, like, yeah, it might not be the most original for us to say Minnesota twice, but it's also because they had such an incredible performance throughout that entire major that you can't really pick anyone else realistically. No. Let's talk about MVPs, most valuable player from the major. Well, it's gonna go to Standy. Standy was across every game mode and across the entire tournament, Minnesota's best mm -hmm. player. He played unreal in the finals for them to come back. He was dominating Search and Destroys. In order for them to actually get back on the road, it was Miami Search and Destroy. I believe he went 12 and four. After they were down 4-0 and getting beat down in every single map, he was one that turned it around. To have your rookie player be the guy that steps up when you need it the most, that's what leaders do. That's what veteran stars do. And that's what Stanley did. Stanley's proven to be a top tier talent and He's clearly the MVP. In order to get through that road and to play that consistently well is super impressive. Uh, you can't take it away from him. He's, he's definitely the best. No, I, okay, I wanna go with Stanley again or like someone from Minnesota, but I can't, I feel like we can't agree on like everything. So I'm just gonna say uh, MVP in general is to have, have a, an event back, a LAN event with a crowd. It was such a great thing to see. It was so much more fun to hear the energy, <laughs> to be able to watch moments happen in the game and hear the crowd. Uh, I think added so much more to the broadcast and obviously with the pandemic and everything else, it wasn't possible, but I think maybe, I don't know, the crowd to me was my MVP to just finally have them back yelling, shouting, our unoriginal chance, but I missed the chance. Let's go up <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but they were back and I missed them and I, I think uh, that just added kind of that element of COD that we were missing, it was great. What's not so great is our LVP's least valuable players, Pac-Man. Since there's only two of us, I'll, I'll let you go first again. I'm gonna go with Shotzi. Ooh, Why? That's it's usually someone that's on my most valuable player, best mm -hmm. players, positive accolades, but you know what? I'm just gonna go to him because I feel like he's Dallas's best player, superstar, supposed to be that guy. And Dallas played poorly. I could just say the whole team because it's probably a teamwork thing, if I'm being honest. Like their teamwork and Kim was off, but I'm just gonna go to Shotzi because he didn't play how I expected him to play. I expected him to be like Standy was this weekend. The best player by far. By far the standout SMG of the tournament and he wasn't. He was mm -hmm. Dallas and Shotzi were both just lackluster. I expected so much more. Even in the win against LA Thieves, LA Thieves really put up a really good fight and had a couple of LA Thieves members play just a little bit better, they would have upset Dallas. Dallas, they really didn't look like a championship team. Yeah. And I look towards someone like Shotzi to be the reason why they get over that little hump, why they clutch up situations that they, that they don't normally do. The guy that stays alive for an extra three seconds and annoys the hell out of the other team, I expect that from him at this point. He's earned that recognition, that, that love, but on the other side of that token mm -hmm. is always like, the where is it? This is, this is why you're a superstar, prove it to me. No, I like that. I, I mean, when you're going to give someone that high of praise, it also comes on the other side of it with a certain amount of expectations. And if they're not met, that needs to be pointed out. Uh, my LVPs, uh, it's fairly obvious. Toronto was up 4-0 in the grand final, people. 4-0. That's 4-0. You only have to win five maps to win the grand final. That's one That's more map. You needed one map. You needed a single goddamn map to win that. <laughs> And you got reverse swept, 5-4 and lost. I have to give, I, I I don't want to do this, but I have to give my LVP to them because that's unacceptable. And I'm sure they yell back at the camera like, yeah, we know. They know more than I do. I don't have to face that kind of 
pain or heartbreak or any of that, and I get it. But if you're up 4-0, it is unacceptable. It is, so, it is, Katie. But they still won more maps in the series they lost than Atlanta won the entire weekend. And you're choosing- I could give, And you're okay. choosing Toronto. Cause they're up 4-0. In the final. 4-0 against the team. Oh God, God. In the final. <sighs> in the final. In the final, Katie. They've still made it to the final. They were still on the cusp of winning okay, the fair. final. At least they didn't go out with a sad 0-2 whimper, lose to Minnesota, and then lose to fucking Seattle. Like, that's fair. Okay, sorry, <laughs> FaZe. That's really disappointing. Be better than that. I can give it to you. I can give multiple <laughs> of you. Just be like, damn, Toronto, you're up 4-0. Like, Yeah, Jesus. that's not good. That's not good. I'm just But you're right. They got there. So yeah, fair. just like, leave the poor lads alone. They're hurting enough. They won't see this. They're not on social media right now. It's fine. True. All right, never mind. Kick them. But FaZe, if you Kick are, em. my God. As always, guys, MVPs, LVPs, what do you think of ours? What do you think should have been mentioned that wasn't? Uh, agree, disagree, let us know in those comments, guys.